Hey everyone, my name is Matt. Welcome to my shop. Today is August 16th. And it's my weekly shop update. So a couple of weeks ago, uh, we were on vacation, which was super nice. And I've been back kind of catching up here for the last couple of weeks. Didn't have a whole lot to talk about last week since I was on vacation for the previous week. So we're doing this now. So I have a few things to uh, update you about. But the vacation was super nice. It was great to just be like, you know, not thinking about work all the time for both myself and Lindsay and just spending time with the family hanging out, having fun. I attempted to eat my weight in tacos. We were staying in San Antonio and the uh, tacos there are quite nice. <laughs> so I, made, I ate many tacos and didn't get sick of them, which is that's good. I'm wearing my, you know, my taco shirt. <laughs> we stayed at this uh, nice ranch just on the north side of San Antonio in Bolverde and it was a super nice place with a couple hundred acres of just land and there were some horses that kind of roam around and it was just super chill, super nice, super relaxing and I'm really happy that we had that because it was much, much needed. The relaxation time is quite nice. <laughs> so since I've been back, of course, I finished up the radial vineyard video and a little bit of follow-up on that in a second. I also saw some live oak for the first time which was a really cool experience and I'm also getting some exposure to vacuum kiln drying, which is another pretty cool and exciting thing that I'm excited about. So first, let's talk a little bit about the radial veneering thingy. So first off, I do apologize for the audio in the video. Uh, Scott's lav mic was set up for me, and Scott has a much more... I didn't think I'd find anyone more like excitable than myself, but Scott's a lot more excitable, so a lot of his audio was clipping, and it was really bad, so instead of scrapping the whole video, I decided to just try and run some filters through it to declip it so that you could still hear it a little bit, but the content and the stuff was so good, I just didn't want to throw that one away. So hopefully you still got a good idea of how to do that. I think the, the Scott did a really good job explaining that whole process. So as a little bit of a follow-up for that, Scott did give me an extra copy of his book, and I will be giving it away. So there will be a link down in the description to the giveaway sign-up thing. You don't have to do anything. I think all you have to do is just put like your email address so I can get a hold of you if you win. You don't have to click on anything, you don't have to go anywhere, you don't have to do anything. Just click the button and you're entered. That'll be open for a week. That's open to everybody and good luck and I hope you uh, like reading because if you win, you're going to have to read this book. <laughs> so I think I have a new favorite wood. This week I also had a chance to pull the live oak log that Phil brought me back in November up onto the mill and get that cut and I think I am uh, in love. <laughs> this stuff is absolutely gorgeous. The actual natural grain of the wood is really nice. It's really subtle and has a really unique look. And then this log itself, of course, is a crotch log, so it does have some crotch figure, but it also has a heavy amount of just curl and figure throughout the entire log as well. So it's uh, pretty ridiculously gorgeous, and I am very much looking forward to using this stuff in the future on something. Now this stuff is ridiculously hard, ow, <laughs> and uh, really dense and really heavy, but man, it's just absolutely just gorgeous. And uh, I'm definitely gonna have to see if I can get some more of this stuff because it's quite nice. Not, uh, not nearly as hard to saw as I think, I don't know, the, the internet makes it seem because I didn't really have a whole lot of problems sawing it, but it is hard, I'll give them that. <laughs> But man, is it crazy beautiful. i really, really excited about this stuff. So I got, um, what, five uh, eight-quarter slabs, and then I got a few thinner, I think those are all five-quarter board type stuff as well. So I got a decent amount of live oak to play with in the, in the future, and I am excited about that, like most things. <laughs> Now over here, I used to have a stack of silver maple slabs, and those are, uh, they're gone. They're at a vacuum kiln, which is also kind of exciting. So I don't have any personal like experience with vacuum kilns. Uh, the only one I've ever actually seen in person is when I went to go see Paul at Canadian Woodworks. Uh, you can watch that video, I'll leave a link to that. He has a radio frequency vacuum kiln. And my friend Eric here in town has a, uh, I guess it would be a hot water plate press vacuum, vacuum press kiln. <laughs> it's a vacuum press 1000 is the name of the kiln, but it is a big old box that you load with slabs and then you put uh, hot water plates between them to put the heat in there. And then it has a membrane on top, which comes down and compresses just like using a vacuum bag and holds the lumber flat. 
while it's drying. So it was really interesting for me to be part of that firsthand, loading the kiln and seeing how the whole process goes is definitely very interesting technology. The slabs I have out here, they've been out here for a year and they're sitting at uh, 14, 15% moisture content and in about three days in the kiln, they'll be down below 8% so it'll be fully dried. So it's uh, definitely a lot faster and the nice thing about the vacuum is the fact that it, just, it dries it without any additional stress like you would have if you're trying to do it with uh, heat or in a typical heated kiln type environment. So you get like the, uh, all of the benefits of the slow air drying process with the lot faster speed of it thing. So pretty darn cool. So that whole log was one that I cut a year ago. It's spalted silver maple with a whole bunch of embedded metal. I'll leave you a link to that video if you're interested. Most of the slabs from that log are still available. So if you're interested in one in particular, just shoot me an email. They'll be ready for pickup uh, early next week. I'm picking them up on Monday and go see how fun it is to unload a kiln. <laughs> So that is what I've been up to this week. Let's take a look at some viewer projects. First this week are a set of decorative panels by David. The panels are made from beech and David said these were very tedious to build. Every other slat is flush with the face and the others are recessed behind a rabbit. The recessed ones were easy but the flush ones were cut with a dado blade and a sacrificial fence with the goal of zero gaps to the face frame. They're finished with paste wax and several tons of elbow grease. <laughs> Next this week is a coffee table by Kevin. The table is made from walnut and he wanted to try a bunch of new things in this build. This was his first time working with rough sawn lumber, servicing itself and making breadboard ends. The tabletop features a segmented center made from walnut, maple and paduke and the carcass was made using Morris and tannin joinery. Kevin has a great video over on his YouTube channel of making this table, so I'll definitely check that out. Next is a federal desk by Chris. Chris made this desk for his seven year old son. He built it primarily using rough cut cherry and poplar as a secondary wood. He used all traditional hand tools on this build and also used hot hide glue. He also turned the legs and the drawer pulls on a spring pole lathe. Last this week is an urn by Dan. Dan made this box as an urn for his friend's baby who was lost at 24 weeks in utero. He says it was a sad project to make but also he was very honored to do it. It's made from figured curly maple and walnut that he milled on his property. The top is friction fit and the CNC engraving was something the parents designed. He also got their baby's footprints on the box using a laser printer and polyacrylic. The urn is finished with several coats of armor seal semi-gloss. And you can find more of Dan's work over on Instagram. I'll leave you a link to that down below along with links to everything I referenced this week as well as always. So I think that's about all I have for this week. Thank you as always for watching. I greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions or comments about anything I talked about today or anything here in my shop, please feel free to leave me a comment. As always, I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. And until next time, <laughs> happy woodworking.